In this video, we're introducing percentages. Uh, we're going to be practicing converting fractions and decimals to percentages. And then in questions 7 and 8, we're going to do some real-life worded examples of uh, percentage questions. So the times are in red, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in. Okay, question four, and quite a few of the, the rest of the questions in this video, deals with percentages. Now, you've probably heard that word before, and uh, a good example is if in your last maths exam you got, I don't know, say, five out of ten, so you would have got 50% of that maths exam. Or if you got, let's say, 60 out of 100, you would have got 60% in that maths exam. Now, I'm going to use that example all the way through here. This question asking us asks us, to convert these percentages to fractions. So fractions being number over a number with a numerator denominator. So this is how I would do this. 27%. In my last maths exam, I wouldn't be too happy if I got this, I got 27%. So I can say, if it was out of 100, let's say, you can say that, I would have got 27 out of 100. That's, the, that's all you have to do for this. There is one last step though, and that is converting these fractions to simpler form, simplest forms, like we, like we do every time we deal with fraction questions. Um, this one here, we're lucky enough to be in some simplest form already. Let's have a look at the second question, 37%. So in my maths exam, out of 100, I got 37 out of 100. Is it in simplest form? Yes, this one is also in simplest form. We're getting lucky here with these questions. Now the third one, oh, I was really smart this year, I got 205% of my maths exam. There might have been some, some bonus marks at the end that I got. So I got 205 out of 100. You beauty. My parents would love that. Is that in simplest form? Well, I know that 5 goes into both of these two numbers. It goes into 205 uh, 41 times, and it goes into 120 times. And... This is now in the simplest form. So here's our three answers. Question five is pretty much the opposite of question four. We're now converting these fractions into percentages. And I'll use the maths uh, exam example again. So for this maths exam out of 100, I got 47 out of 100. Now, the key to all of these questions is your denominator in the fraction needs to be 100 to make it easy for yourself. Okay, and you'll, see, and you'll see why now. This one is already 100, so I can simply say, as a percentage, it's 47%. Second one, 2 over 5. I want to change my denominator to be over 100. So how did I get to go from 5 to 100? Well, I times it by 20. Now, I have to times top and bottom by the same. That's the law of fractions. 2 times 20 is 40. I have my denominator as 100. That's great. I can just now... My answer, percentage, is 40%. Third one, 11 over 20. Pretty easy again. I want to change my denominator to 100. In order to do that, I have to times this by 5. I have to also times the top by 5, law of fractions. 5 times 11 is 55. My answer, 55%. Yeah. Question six is also converting to percentages. I split up question five and question six because question five were like the warm up, the baby questions to convert to percentages. The reason they were baby because I made the denominator 100. Now, these harder questions, I'll give you the big tip for the day. To convert to percentages, you times by... 100, okay? This is your, make sure that's in screen, which is important, there we go. You times by 100. I'll give you some examples here. So let's do the first one. I want to convert 9 over 2 into a percentage. So this is a fraction at the moment. I want this as something percent. So 9 over 2 times 100. Now 100 is also the same as 100 over 1. That's just 100. Anything over 1 is, is itself. 
Now, this is laws of multiplication of fractions. You times the top and you times the bottom. So 9 times 100 is 900 over 2 times 1. So I've times the 9 and the 100 and I've times the 2 times 1. So I've now got 900 divided by 2. And now, once I times it by this, it is now in percentage form. This is a percentage. Okay, this is no longer a fraction. Now, 900 divided by 2 is 450. So, my answer to the first one, 9 over 2 is 450%. So, I just want to recap. The difference between question 5 and 6 was 5 was just a warm-up. From now, when you want to convert either a fraction or a decimal into a percentage, I highly recommend you times by 100 and that will get you into percentage form. As soon as you have times by 100, you are now not in fraction form. You're in percentage form. And that's what you're after. And after that, everything is just simplifying. Okay? Cool. So let's have a look at the second one. I'm just going to... Um, yeah, I've got enough room. I'll draw that down here. So 1 over 8. I'm going to times by 100. Now remember, 100 is the same as 100 over 1. 100 divided by 1 is 100. I'll times the top, times the bottom. So it's going to be 100 over 8. Now this is, this is once I do this, I'm now in a percentage. Okay? So I've now got 100 over an 8%. That, that, that technically is correct. Your teacher probably won't like it because it's not in the simplest form, but this is correct. It's 100 over 8%. So I now need to simplify this. Now we're going to go simplifying fractions law. Even though I say fractions, we are percentage, but I need to do the same thing. So highest common factor is, um, well, 8 doesn't go into 100. 4 does. So it's going to be uh, 100 divided by 4 is 25. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So it's 25 over 2%. Now, what I really like it as 25 over 2. I like it as a whole number. So we're going to have to go and, and, and do our dividing techniques that we've learned. So how many times does 2 go into 25? Well, how many times does 2 go into 2? Goes in at once. How many times does 2 go into 5? Goes in at twice with one remainder. So I'm going to, have to do a decimal point and a zero here. One remainder. How many times does 2 go into 10? 5. Put a decimal point up here. So our final answer would be 12.5. 5%. Now this can also be written as 12, instead of writing 0.5, which is a half, I can write 12 and a half percent. And this is probably how your teacher is going to like it. I'm personally fine with either of these. Your teacher is probably going to like this one better. Okay, we're on to the third one now. I'm just going to get a bit of room. So... I'm just going to rub this out. It's still there for you. If you want, just rewind if you want to see it. Okay. So now we've got two and three quarters. Okay. Remember the technique from a previous video. I'll just briefly explain it again. If you have it in this form, we want it in fraction form where we just have one number over one number. That's what we want. In order to get that, we times... 4 and 2, which is 8, plus a 3, which is 11. So it's going to be 11 over 4. This number plus that number. I want to convert to percentage, so I'm going to times by 100. Now, times top, times bottom. Law of multiplication of fractions. So it's going to be 11, 1,100, sorry, over 4. And... We're now in percentage form, okay? So we have 1,100 over 4%. That's right, probably not as simple as we'd like to go, so let's go and simplify this now. Now, um, we, 4 might go into 1,100. I'm not entirely sure. Let's take a highest common factor of 2 out. I know that 2 goes into 11,100. Now, 2 goes into that uh, 550 times. And 2 goes into 4 twice. Still as a percentage. I'll go over here now. Now 550 divided by 2 is just 275. So we didn't have to go and do the division because 4 went into 1100. 
So our final answer to this is 275%. Okay, now let's have a look at the last one now. I'm going to have to bring this over and I'm going to rub this out for some room. We have a decimal now. We don't have a, um, we don't have a fraction. Okay, same thing though. You just times by 100. So I've got 0.42 times 100. I'm not going to times it by 100 over 1 this time because it's not a fraction. I don't really need it. It's the same thing. But So now, times by 100, that's just simply just going to be 42.00% times by 100. You're going to be moving this decimal point uh, 1, 2. And there's our answer, 42%. Now question 7 sort of brings together what we did in question 5 and question 6. And now we're converting again to percentages. The only difference here is they've, they've written it in words. Okay, It's actually probably one of the easier questions out of all of these three questions. What does it mean by 20 out of 25? Well, that just simply means 20 over 25. So 39 out of 50 just simply means 39 over 50. 24 out of 60. Beautiful. So now we um, do what we learnt in question 5 and question 6 to then go and convert these into percentages. They're not in percentage yet. You've just simply written this in a different form to how we like it. Now, now I'm going to use the technique that we did in question 5 for these first two questions. And then I'm going to use the technique that we did in question 6 by times you by 100 for, question th uh, for, the, for the third question. Just so you can see the difference. Because I, like, I quite like the question 5 technique because it's just easy. I want to change the denominator to 100. Okay, so I'm going to times this by 4, times the top by 4. I'm allowed to do that if I times top and bottom are the same. So 20 times 4 is 80. 25 times 4 is 100. I'm not in percentage form yet, I'm still a fraction. If I have a denominator of 100, then my percentage is simply just the top number. So my answer, I'll just draw an arrow, is 80%. Great. Let's do the same thing here. Let's get this denominator being 100. So I'm just going to times it by 2 to turn 50 into 100. I've got to times the top by 2 as well. 39 times 2 is 78 over 100, my denominator is 100, simple. My percentage, 78%. Now, they only really work if it's easy to change the denominator into 100. And that was question 5, and then question 6 was for the harder questions, and this is a good example for that. Now, what do we do again? We're going to times the fraction by 100 to change it in percentage form. So now... This is a percentage, okay? Now I'm going to probably shift the board over here to get some room. So now 24 times 100 is just 24, oh, sorry, 2,400, and then 60 times 1 is just 60. How are we going to explain? This is still a percentage. So this is a, this is a percentage answer, 2,400 over 60, but it's not simplified yet. We're going to have to... Uh, do some simplification. Now, one technique you can just divide both sides by the top and bottom by 10. So I can now write that is 240 over 6. Now, I know in my head that 6 times 40 is 240. Now, if you couldn't get that straight away, then maybe I'm just a little bit further ahead in my multiplication skills, which I'm yeah, so that's good. So 240 divided by 6 is is 40. This is a percentage. And this is a percentage. So my answer, 24 out of 60, is 40%. Okay. Question 8, you're looking at percentages again. More percentages. And you'll, you'll soon to learn to love them. More worded questions now. We're looking at 50% of 36 or 5% of 60, or 14% of 40. Now, these are, these are really lifelike examples. When you go and, um, say, go to the grocery shopping with your mum and, 
and the mangoes, which are usually $5 or each, are 50% off, then you can work out in your head that now they're only $2.50 each, and you can buy double. Or if, or it's just say the bacon is 80% off, and you can calculate how much that bacon is per kilo. These are really lifelike examples. Now I'm going to show you um, how to go and do that. The key to these is to work out what these percentages are as a fraction. If I got 50% in my maths exam, and my maths exam was out of 100, then I would get 50 out of 100. If I got 5% in my maths exam, which I wouldn't be too happy about, that means I only would have got 5 out of 100. If I got 14% in my maths exam, that means I would have only got 14 marks. This is the important part of this question, to work out your percentage as a fraction. Because now what you do, 50% of 36, you simply times by 36. 36 is the same as 36 over 1, same thing, anything over 1 is that number. Now, laws of multiplication of fractions, you times the top and you times the bottom. Now, we've learned how to times big numbers before, but I'm going to bring out the old uh, the phone here. So let's go 50 times 36 is 1,800. Now, I'm not going to do 100 times 1 on my phone because I know that that's 100. And then I know that 1,800 over 100 is just simply 18. So 50% of 36, and you can probably guess this in your head to be honest at the start, is 18. Let's look at the second one now. 5% of 60, I've got 5 over 100, my fraction's fine. I'm going to times it by 60 over 1. 5 times 60, well that's going to be 300. I don't need my phone for that one. 100 times 1. So my final answer, 300 over 100 is 3. So 5% of 60 is 3. Okay, third one now, 14% of 40. So I've already got my fraction for the percentage. I'm going to times it by 40 over 1. Now, I'm going to times the top line. I'm going to times the bottom line. So 14 times 40, uh, that is equal to, in my head, I've got pretty good multiplication skills. It's going to be 560. Now, 100 times 1 is 100. Now, we're nearly there. What's 560 divided by 100? Now, I did this pretty quickly over here. 300 by 100 equals 3. Now, how you do that, if you divide by 100, you simply move the, multi the decimal point 2 to the left. So here's my decimal point. I'm going to move it 2 to the left because 100 has two zeros in it. If I was dividing by 1,000, I would move it 3 to the left. But it's just 100 this time. So my decimal point... It's now here, so my answer is 5.6. So 14% of 40 is 5.6.